Hello, and welcome back to Living a Sin. Let's take a quick deep look into what FIRE is all about and how it may be a great starting point to reaching your end goal, financial independence, retire early. Let's begin. The idea behind the FIRE movement is to gain financial independence by amassing enough wealth and cutting your expenses so that you can retire not just early, but extremely early. Many of the individuals that embark on this path are looking to retire in their 30s, 40s, and 50s, all depending on how late or early they began. How does FIRE work? The FIRE movement is all about taking control of your finances. However, due to many variables such as the state of the economy, time, or physical restraints, many focus less on increasing the amount they make, but prefer to focus their attention on spending less altogether. It may sound counterintuitive, especially when it has been proven that increasing your income and spending less will help you reach your end goal in a much shorter time span. As a participant, you will focus on two areas, which are really two sides of the same coin. Saving and investing more of what you earn on one side and spending less of what you earn on the other. By saving and investing their money, participants accumulate a good amount of money that can in turn generate enough income to sustain their lifestyles. The number one tool that will be used by you is a good old-fashioned detailed spreadsheet. Next is the need for a financial plan. The financial plan will lay out a model of how you will go about meeting all your needs. The model is centered on your income and the rate of return you can expect from your savings and investments. The typical investment vehicle of choice are stocks, mutual funds, and ETFs. To meet this goal, all participants must take on extra risk by investing in one or all three of these vehicles. And that means understanding how the stock market works and having a broker's account. Unfortunately, one of the most uncomfortable truth is you will not be able to rely on the low returns and absolute safety of a bank account to amass your fortune. On the bright side, by spending less, you reduce the overall amount of savings required in order to retire early. While some FIRE critics say that FIRE participants live a too frugal lifestyle to reach their goal, many invested participants feel that they're not making any type of extraordinary sacrifices. Plus, they enjoy moving towards independence, which is what actually brings them joy during this pursuit. But however they approach it, FIRE participants see the lifestyle as a way to spend their time doing what they really want to do, rather than having society tell them what they should be doing with their time. As a person, that's participating in this FIRE movement, you will undoubtedly work hard to achieve that dream. However, having a forward-thinking mindset will help you in this journey. Questions like whether or not you should buy a new car this year is something that will be a constant thought throughout your journey. One special thing about this movement is it's really supportive of members who are new and have started their journey. Refreshingly, you could come across other members who are always eager to provide spreadsheets and other tools to help teach you along the way. This social solidarity helps FIRE participants realize that there is a community that values what they're trying to achieve, making it that much easier to do. Although we talked about support from others, I do however have to make it clear that not everyone will have the same objectives along the way as you. Yes, the end goal is the same, but the path is not. For example, you may find yourself being one of two mindsets based on what they see as valuable and the sacrifices they are able to make. The two mindsets are the extreme savers and the moderate savers. First, the extreme savers. They cut down on every lighthearted pleasure to minimize expenses. No cars, only the most modest apartment or even free accommodation is the aim, if they can find it. They don't go out and may even avoid a lot of social interaction unless it's on their terms. In short, everything is secondary to the goal of financial independence. These savers might target saving 70 to 80% of their after-tax income. Now, the moderate savers. Moderate savers target 50% or more. However, they're not willing to give up some things that they do value. They may trade down from two cars to one, for example, and they prefer to own a used car that they use daily until the wheels fall off. They may take a family vacation to go camping rather than go to an expensive attraction. These folks may be willing to work an extra year or two in exchange for doing something they love. Well, with all this work and sacrifice, what are some of the benefits of FIRE? The benefits of FIRE come mostly from the act of being financially independent, such as 1. Financial security. 
When you become financially independent, you no longer need a paycheck to survive. That is because you have amassed enough wealth and your investment can cover all your expenses. Before reaching financial independence, you may have no choice but to keep working. But after financial independence, you can leave the moment you declare that's the last straw and still be just fine financially. Two, if you choose to continue to work, you could choose a job that aligns with your values. If the values of a nonprofit fit your moral compass, you may be better off working there. A job with a nonprofit may pay less than your current job, but once you reach financial independence, there isn't any absolute need to continue working at your current job. As you can see, the idea is to have more options and to be able to do something especially meaningful to you. Three, reclaiming your time. They say that time is money, but we all know there's nothing more valuable than time. No, not even money. And once you reach fire, you will no longer be obligated to exchange your time for money. Instead, you can spend time doing things you really enjoy. That could be spending more time with family, volunteering, traveling, or whatever you're passionate about. These activities usually don't pay, and yet most of us would consider them priceless. Let me add a few more helpful tips on how you could become financially independent. FIRE is a movement. It isn't a particular decree or set of rules. However, some ways to become financially independent includes increasing your income. Again, there are many ways to go about this. Common strategies include asking for a raise, switching jobs, or getting another job or side hustle. Reduce your expenses. Most Americans, their biggest expense are housing, transportation, and food. Strategies here include downsizing your home or renting out extra bedrooms if you'd rather stay put. You can also buy less expensive cars and eat out less often to help keep within a budget. Think about saving and invest the difference. After increasing income and reducing expenses, many individuals save the difference and often invest in high return assets such as stocks, mutual funds, or ETFs. They keep their money working for them as long as possible. The bottom line? Is FIRE a fit for you? There's a lot to like about the FIRE movement, even if you don't decide to retire early. For one thing, as pensions have largely disappeared in the private sector and lessening the financial incentive to stay with one employer for many years, the shift in financial responsibility from employer to employee has made FIRE something to consider as you pursue financial independence regardless of your long-term goals. Financial independence leads to the sort of financial security we should all aspire to have. I hope this video helped. Take care.